to be with your team, to see them get a dream come true. And, and you don't start following college basketball without knowing what this day means and without knowing what that selection show means. And every one of them, no matter what age they started watching, they remember it. And now they will always have this to remember. No matter how long they play, they'll always remember the first one. And it's it's really, really a special time. And uh, I just wish we'd have had I wish we had our students on campus and more people around where we could have even shared it with them. But with it being spring break, a uh, great venue to hold it in. And uh, great for our guys to be able to be together and then be able to share it with all their family and loved ones. It, it's, a, it's a major accomplishment for this team to be in this situation because certainly a year ago this time, certainly throughout the spring, the summer, the fall, the preseason predictions, I don't think anyone envisioned seeing us at this point uh, having a day like this. They have earned it. They have earned every bit of it. They've earned it through all the, 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 the trials and adversities that they've dealt with since they've been in Indiana. But most importantly, they did something about it in the spring, summer, and fall. They got better. Everybody got better. And, and with our new freshmen coming in, with Cody, Austin, Remy, with the veterans that we had in the program and the synergy and togetherness that's been developed inside of this, uh, it's put us in this position. And the thing I like about this team is they continue to get better as the season has gone along. And I think all you have to do is look at uh, the way we finished up the season, especially the last month. And uh, they answered the bell. And a couple times we did, and a couple times we weren't as good as we needed to be, but a lot of times we were. And as I told them this afternoon, the 33 games of experience they have come to life now as they go into a one-game situation because it becomes about the details uh, of the game for them. It becomes about making sure that they know why they win and understanding what hurts us when we lose and how we want to uh, take advantage of all the things that make us better. Uh, it's being able to get ready in a quick, short period of time and being able to get ready for, for teams that they may not know a lot about. But the thing about these guys, we got a lot of college basketball fans, we got a lot of smart guys, but most importantly, we got a lot of guys that want to win. And I'm really excited to go into this with uh, our players and coaches. We really haven't had a true opportunity to talk about Riddell. I would just say this most importantly about Riddell. There's no way. Even with, with the way so many guys have played, there's no way we're sitting in here today without the contributions that he's made, certainly over his career, but when you look at the season that he had. And uh, we will miss him on the court, but his spirits and his attitude of trying to help his teammates and be a part of this, I, I think he fully understands that he is a huge part of this program. And when you feel like that, then you can bring uh, confidence and advice and all those kind of things to your teammates. Because uh, just like it's a shared process with all of our fans and administration and everybody that's stuck through everything as we've gone through this time period the last few years to get to a day like today, it's the same thing with the team. It's the same thing with the team. So as we get ready, what I know about New Mexico State, I know that Marvin Menzies is a very good coach. He's got a great background. He had a lot of success with Rick Pitino. Uh, we think we'll see a team that... They plays an up-tempo system. They're averaging over 76, 77, 78 points a game, something like that right now. They won 26 games, I believe, in that league. Uh, anybody that it, it does this for a living knows the better players, and Wendell McKinnis is one of the better players, not only on the West Coast, but certainly in the country. He's 6'6". Uh, I believe he's had 20 double-doubles. He's averaging a double-double. Uh, they have a couple of things that stand out about them that make them really unique. And uh, certainly it's something that we're partial to because we work really hard to get to the foul line. I can't remember a team that averages 30 free throw attempts, just like they do. And that, that's, that's an incredible number. And they average almost 15 offensive rebounds. So they are relentless, aggressive. I've seen them in bits and pieces. Certainly we haven't studied them like we're going to do tonight. But I've seen them over a period of time and, and uh, uh, they're a relentless team. They're an absolutely relentless team. They get guys that, that uh, come from you know, different parts of the country, uh, different places, and they mesh into a very good team. And we've got a lot of respect for the WAC. So uh, I'll open it up to questions, but again, it, it is not only an honor, but it's a well-earned uh, achievement for this team to be in this situation. And uh, I, I can't stress enough how hard they've worked to get here and, and uh, the work that they've done. Uh, has put us in this spot, and hopefully it's just beginning for us again. 
Oregon? Well, I, I, in Marquette, we were we were we were sent to the to the West Coast for Thursday games. I've never not been involved where it wasn't a Thursday uh, in all the NCAA tournaments that we played in. So, as a staff, we're almost used to that. That's okay. And uh, Portland's a great place. I have not seen the Rose Garden, but a couple of our guys uh, have been there. Calvert Cheney has played in it. And watching games on it, it looks like just a, a spectacular place. It looks like the, the crowd support, certainly when the Trailblazers play there, is phenomenal. And I don't think it'll be any different. I don't think they'd have got the spot if, if they weren't looking forward to having great support. And it's a, it's a great basketball area. It's a great sports area. So it's a long ways away. Hopefully our fans can travel. I know our West Coast fans will be excited about that. And hopefully a lot of our Midwest fans, hopefully some of our Indiana, state of Indiana, Hoosier Nation fans can get out there because we're going to need uh, all the support we can get. It's a little easier for the New Mexico State fans to get there. So we need that support. What was the first thing that went through your mind personally when you heard your name called? How quick it came up. <laughs> I, mean, I wasn't ready for it. So it just got done doing the CBS. I thought I was going to get to sit there for a little bit. But uh, stunned and then I just wanted to, to see uh, uh, my family's faces because I miss seeing that because I've gotten I think when, you, when you're there every year, like we were there at the, in Marquette the last three years, you, you kind of almost take it for granted. And I don't want to miss that. And that's one of the reasons I'm looking forward to seeing the pictures. You want this well documented. I want them to have their memories. And uh, it's great to see all the players be that excited for it. And uh, I think they are. And uh, so those, those are it. I mean, when, when, you, when it's your first couple of times, it, it blows you away. But then you really just want to share it with other people. And as my kids have gotten older, uh, that means a lot to me. Were you thinking of a four seed coming into today, or what were you thinking? Well, about? actually, my, 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 my feelings have always been, whatever you're being projected, get yourself braced for a little, one, what do you say, high or low. I mean, when everyone was predicted four, I'm saying, okay, if a five comes up, that's just the way it is. And I think what you learn over a period of time, that the seed is nice because it, it reflects the body of work. But then it truly becomes, or how do you match up? How do you match up in the first game? What are the possibilities of the second game? Then you look ahead and you see what your bracket looks like. But, but to me, after tonight, we probably won't even be looking at the bracket other than the first two games that we would potentially play. And the majority of my time and this team's time will be spent on New Mexico State. Coach, it seems like you kind of took some exception to what was said on CBS about the Wichita State matchup possibly. In the oh, I love it. That's Seth. That's Seth Davis. <laughs> so Seth has been giving us Seth has been giving us ammunition all year. I mean, Seth Seth is the gift that keeps on giving <laughs> right now with his predictions. So we look forward to that. I hope I, I I never have a problem when anybody picks against us. So uh, I don't think the guys that, that we go to battle with uh, take take uh, any great fear in that. But uh, <laughs> It was it was quick how quick he got that how quick he had uh, us getting beat. But that's it. You will use that to remind the players tonight. They saw it live. They won't. We won't. We won't. There'll be things that'll come up that'll be better than that. It's early in the week. That was only after the first 30 seconds. So there'll be plenty of things. We've got we've got a team of guys that do a great job. I thought I found most things, but these guys find things that I don't even know where to look at. So no, we uh, we all, we always have enough ammunition. You've obviously got guys who are excited and you want them to appreciate every opportunity here. How do you get that mindset shift? Obviously these guys are ready to play. How do you handle the next few days? To oh, we'll, just, we'll just go to work. I mean, it's a, we, had a, we had a short workout today, uh, this afternoon. We'll be back out tomorrow. It'll be a little bit quicker because of how quick we'll leave. They'll have to adjust to the surroundings that much uh, quicker. But I don't think you make a lot of changes. I think the more you spend time talking about what's out there, allows them to be distracted from what they need to do. And this is a smart group. They wouldn't have 25 wins if they weren't. They wouldn't win the games that they've won if they weren't. They, they, uh, they don't frighten easily. They, they have great preparation ability. They spend, they're very serious about that. Um, they're, they, they practice at a very high level. And I think, I think teams, you know, I was talking to, to Coach Calipari this morning before he played his game, and he was telling me how great his practices had been. I think the best teams this time of year, they practice hard every day. And they understand it. And now this becomes so much about taking care of the details of the game and the things that have put us in this situation. That's what's most important for us. And so uh, we won't get away from fundamentals. We won't get away from preparation. We won't get away from 
knowing personnel, we won't get away from the game plan. Uh, but, to, but to downplay the fact that we're in the NCAA tournament, that wouldn't make much sense either. So just take it as it goes. Tom, you guys obviously had a lot of great moments individually this year, you know, wins over Kentucky and all that. What, what does this moment mean for the program and all the work you guys have put into getting here? Well, again, I thought I'd be a little more reflective on that, and I really haven't. I mean, it's been moving so fast. <coughs> it's, a big, it's a big deal to have this day, okay? And, and when, you, when you coach and when you come into Indiana and when this day was just really an important day, but a day that everybody got used to, my family got used to this day. And then this day goes away for, for different reasons. And you can't ever lose belief that you're going to get back to it. And we never did. Now, did we have bad days? Did we have bad moments? Did we have bad games? Absolutely. That's all part of it. But you can never have self-doubt that you can't uh, get the program where it needs to be to get back to them. And most importantly, you can't have players that are filled with doubt. they got to be filled with more than hope. they got to be filled with desire and, and edge and and, and a real uh, ability to get to that point. And I think that's what's, think that's what's happened. So it's a great feeling. It, it's one that we'll probably reflect upon a lot more when the season's over. But right now, it's still very much a work mode. You talked about your reaction when you saw your name, you know, Indiana up there. What was it like just to see the guys and, and just how they reacted to it? To well, I'll look forward to seeing some of the video on that because uh, uh, it was great. It, 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 uh, it, it was exciting for them, and I'm, I'm sure that they'll feel the same way. But then I'm Sure, just like they've been all year. They'll take it and they'll be ready to get back to work. Tom, does your bench give you a little bit of an edge, the depth that you have? Well, I don't know. I don't know enough about New Mexico State in, in the sense of, of uh, all the details of their team to know where our edges are or where their edges are. I know when I look at a team that gets 30 free throw attempts a game and 15 offensive rebounds and scores those kind of points, that's it, it, we're going to need our bench. Put it that way. We're going to need to be really good. We're going to need to stay out of foul trouble. We're going to need to be able to play in a transition game. At the same time, we're going to want to run. So I don't know where all that where all that shapes up yet, but there's no question that our depth has been a key all year, and, and I certainly expect that it will be on Thursday. I know it's always all year it's been part of your, the coach's leadership but also the player's leadership. How much more important does the coaching staff's leadership become because you guys have been to tournaments whereas the players haven't? Well, I think it's, it's like anything else. This team, this team really pays attention, they absorb, and they want to get better. And, and when you've got a group of people that want to get better, they're really easy to, to, to help do that with, and, and they listen well. And uh, the whole key is for us to stay uh, in the moment. It's to not jump ahead, it's to not live in the past, it's to get ready for the next thing. It's to not, you know, my big thing to me is you can't get out of character. Okay, it's not, well, I haven't been doing this, when all of a sudden I'm going to do this in the tournament. No, we need to do what we do. And we need to do it better. And we need to do it better every day so that when game time comes, we're where we need to be. And a lot of it's conceptual when it gets to this time of year. It's not like we're going to do a lot of different things. There's a couple different things we have planned for the tournament, no matter who we were going to play. And, that, and that's part of getting ready for the week as well. But they're used to that because we do that for every game. But I think it's uh, when you travel like that and you're in an area a little bit longer, you, you've got to make sure that you occupy their time allow them to have freedom to enjoy, but at the same time make sure that our business is good. And, and the way we treat film sessions and, the, and the, um, the time periods of those, they're not real long and drawn out. There's a lot of quick hitting things. And just make sure we're keeping their, their uh, attention span sharp for what they're out there to do. No conspiracy theories, but did you figure that one way or another you were going to end up in the same region as Kentucky? Yeah, because he kept saying that, in all honesty. I think John's, I think John, uh, that was one of his uh, his guesses, more than anything else. So, but, but that's him. He's got some conspiracy theories. <laughs> so, but uh, no, he, that's one thing he said. You know, we're going to end up in the same region. So to see that up there like that, that wasn't a shock, and that's that's fun. Anything else for coach? Uh, you, you talked a little about depth there. I mean, just having to have play as Remy as much as you did against Wisconsin, I mean, how comfortable do you feel having to probably play? Well, I think, I think the key that Remy played, and, and like, it was a big part of the win at Purdue, when Verdell was hurt, games like that is, is what's helped that. It, it's, it, uh, Verdell was playing really well, I mean, really well. Rebounding the ball, deflections. He was doing stat sheet things. He was also doing things which really, really led to winning and, and delivering the basketball and defending pretty well. Those, those things are all big, and you miss that. Remy's, Remy's capable. And, and Riddell's got to help him. And uh, uh, but we're very confident with Remy. And, and certainly we felt like 
going into this month and going into the tournament to have a to have you know you don't anticipate not having a good depth until the other day, but you you figure that you're going to the, the, the depth of the guard spot is going to be really good for you. We can play a lot of different ways, and this is one of the ways that we've tried to really approach our recruiting over a period of time. It's not as much about position; it's about versatility. And, and having people that can, you see it right now with the way that we guard, it's a big, big part of how we try to develop our team. And, and it's, it's not by accident that Christian Watford can guard point guards. It's by work. It's by his level of athleticism, his desire uh, to improve, his ability to comprehend all the things that we're trying to get him to do on a defensive end. It's how intelligent he is as a player to be able to go and guard a point guard, come out of the game, go back in and guard a power forward. You know, that's the versatility that you want to have in your team. That's what we've always tried to develop and recruit. So you have no idea, and I don't know yet, but we have no idea what are going to be our best situations going into this game. But the fact that these guys have been through so many different situations certainly gives us, uh, gives us confidence. Okay.